Parents worry about them, the police investigate them, and for teenagers they have a magnetic attraction. BBC Two now reports from the North East. Are you ready for the return of the beast? On stage one through 80k of genuine turbo sound, DJs Groove Rider, Binny, Colin Favor, Jumping Jack Frost, Devious D, DJ Rap, Parks and Wilson and Smokey Joe. A windswept, isolated field on the other side of the track from Crablington has been chosen as the venue for the latest youth craze. The return of the beast. The police view scenes like this with anxiety. They've seen them before, unlicensed gatherings on wasteland and in empty warehouses. Twelve hours of non-stop frenzied dancing. You can't buy alcohol, it's frowned on, but the pushers are there and drugs change hands. It's a rave. I'm well impressed. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a good night, yeah. It's an all-night, it's an all-night rave. It's starting from about 9 in the evening, going all the way through to about 10 in the morning. This is not Saturday night at the club, you know. But this party is legal. It's the third to be licensed by the local authority and monitored by the police in the past seven months. More are planned. I'm concerned about these raves. I think they're an attraction for possible drug pushes. I'm not saying here on the night because I know the police do a very good job, but certainly before the event takes place, I think that drug pushes are out and about. It's a mass of people all at once, and uh, I think, you know, that granting a license from our point of view, it seems to be a license to, to the drug pushes, you know, and which is a threat to our youngsters, let's face it. dawn. Three days to go and the first signs that a suspect underground culture could be gaining respectability. A portable warehouse suggests organization and commercial interest. This rave isn't a sudden impulse affair. It's been planned and the motivation is profit. But suspicion and distrust have yet to be overcome. There's nothing like this happens in the northeast, just clubs till about two o'clock in the morning. And lots of people travel um, away from the northeast every weekend to go to these events. So I thought, you know, I, mean, I knew there was a demand for it in the northeast, so I decided to get involved and have a go doing one myself. Well, we were approached by the organiser, Mr. Old, um, who came with the, the proposition of having this event. My profession, I'm a builder. Obviously, we looked at it with some trepidation, as it's the first one we knew about that had occurred, uh, certainly in the northeast. And um, we went through the scenario as he predicted and discussed it in very open terms. Um, obviously, we were keen to establish his motivation behind uh, having such an event, uh, which we did. And from day one, he impressed us as an honest uh, type of person who was keen on, on doing things properly and above board. Uh... It's licensed for 3,750. People will come in at that end through uh, there'll be a special gate designed um, where the ticket checks will be done, security checks, searches, they'll all be done at that end. There'll be two perimeter fences around the whole of the, of the main event, two six foot perimeter fences. It's true to say we, we will try and avoid the, having the event in the area if we possibly could. However, the alternative to that is to have an illegal, totally legal and unannounced uh, venue where all of a sudden the, the area could be flooded by many thousands of people, which would be totally unannounced and totally beyond our control. So therefore, danger of public safety, road safety and everything else has to come into the, into the front. 
and uh, that's a consideration we give to it. So better, really, in blunt terms, better the devil we know than the devil we don't. The word rave doesn't mean anything, I mean, a rave, it's basically, it's taken over from like a disco thing, really, I mean, rave is a thing that's happening now and it's, it's about a large group of people um, coming to a place and basically to dance uh, throughout the night to music, to the music that they want to listen to. This we saw purely as a commercial venture to make money for an individual. Anything of that nature we look with some circumspection at because it does have an implication on the policing of the area. So it's not without its problems, but there's no real um, area I can point a finger at and say, well, that's sufficient for me to object to the event occurring. They're all there for one reason, and that's music. There's a certain group of DJs playing a certain type of music that these people want to listen to. Well, the DJs that are coming are the, the, the best, the best of it in the field, you know, the best DJs you can get. And without them, obviously, it wouldn't happen. Absolutely cracking show coming up for you between now and 10 o'clock. You got Smokey Joe from 10 until midnight, right the way through to the witching hour. <laughs> Don't forget, it's only two weeks to Nocturnal 2, the return of the beast. Ooh. Raves have produced new stars. They're DJs like Smokey Joe. He can attract up to 5,000 people. They're prepared to pay 25 pounds each to dance to the music he plays. His appeal is his skill in mixing and matching to create a new sound. <laughs> I'm making a beat there. If that was fading in and out, it'd be kind of going woof, woof. You don't get a cut to it. So that originally comes from queuing the record up. While one's playing, you're queuing the other one in, getting it ready for for the mix, if you were. And uh, that's that's what that's what it's for. That's why you have two. It takes a couple of minutes to get the uh, tempo right, but then you're in the mix. Mixing started around around 1979. Mixing then was really about showmanship and doing something different with these turntables that no one had ever, ever seen before. And now we have mixing, which involves just continuous music without any gaps. Not just like stopping one record and starting another one, yeah? But actually finding the correct tempo required to match your previous record. We don't need that anymore. Injected with a poison. difficult to explain. Certain records have uh, certain parts of them that are recognised by people and that's the bit that people like about it. Yeah? You can cut those bits in and out as often as you want, as long as it's in the correct tempo. Uh, with other tunes, it's like mixing and matching tunes, making them go together, making new tunes out of them. I think a DJ becomes a good DJ the moment he knows exactly what to play, what he wants to play himself and for the crowd that he's playing to. So, <clears throat> once you've discovered what you want, play, yeah? It's then much, much easier to get it right. This is, this is just a, I suppose this is just an extension of my ego, I suppose. So it splits into two, you've got Belgium and Germany, right? In Germany, you get noise, right? You get craft work, real noise, and it's like <laughs> relentless noise. Belgium, you get melodies like this. They're just noises. <laughs> but they're playing a melody. If I play you a German record, all you'd hear was down, 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 one note going over and over again. A number of people have said to me, why have the police allowed this event to go ahead? And I point out to people that it's not a matter of the police allowing an event to go ahead or stopping an event. If several thousand people want to meet in a field, in a remote location, then there's really, they're not breaking the law and it's not up to me to stop them. And I, I look upon this not as a legalised drug party, which is a party where people with a particular interest in a particular 
type of music have come to listen to that music all night. I pay £8,000 for the police, more than St James's Park pay for policing, right? I cover the whole bill, it doesn't cost the, the, the poor tax payer a penny. I could lose £40,000 at the blink of an eye like that, you know? But, like, I've sort of weighed a few things up and I think, you know, um, it's all about putting a good event on, um, getting people there, um, giving people a good night. The drug issue, I mean, I do as a promoter more than anybody could possibly do than any public house where people go and take drugs or buy drugs, any nightclub which, you know, people go in and take drugs. People can go into these places without even getting a search, without drug school officers being there. Club culture, that's what it is, that's its, that's its title now. And it's not just about the drugs, there's drugs, there's uh, Vicks inhaler, there's brightly coloured clothes, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole culture. And not everyone is into everything, yeah? You might see a guy down there wearing, you know, a casual top and a casual pair of trousers and proper shoes, and he might be on a couple of E's. On the other hand, you might see my mate Steve, who goes down there dressed in a sort of nuclear outfit with a mask on and all this business, and he looks pucker, do you know what I mean? He looks really good. And he doesn't do the drugs at all and doesn't care. And that's just, that's his prerogative, and I like him. I like him because of that. It's pointless to say it, really, that there have been drugs for longer than there have been raves. There have always been drugs. Joe's mother views the rave craze as just the latest youthful rebellion against convention. It wakens memories of an earlier refusal to conform. There must be some kind of way out of here. The flower power era was the age of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Parents raised to a gentler tune couldn't understand their teenage children. I can't get no relief. Twenty years and nothing's changed. Many of those teenagers, now parents themselves, are just as mystified by the rave generation. It's the equivalent, I suppose, of any rock festival, any music festival. It's a place where there's music and lots and lots of people who are listening to it. What does Nothing mean? more. Perhaps because it carries on all night, that's the raving aspect of it. That um, they continue until the morning. But I don't think that's anything particularly new. People have done that for a long time. Perhaps it was the only word left to describe something that's unique to these people, the only word they could think of to use. So. I suppose I don't think it promotes drugs. I think the two are indefinably linked, and the music is linked to all of that, and that's something that nobody will change, but that's not, it's not the same for everybody. Dealers are a problem. They're dead greedy. It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter who the dealers are, whether they're ravers or whether they're businessmen or whether they're, you know, the judge that sends you down. It doesn't matter. They are a problem. They are greedy, and it's the greed that causes the problem. It's the money. You know, if one dealer thinks, all oh, right, I've done this, that, and the other in here, and I've made this much money, and I see this geezer over here, and he's done a couple, and I was thinking, Christ, if I got all his business, then I'd be even richer. So I'll go and take him outside and knife him. Well, that's nothing to do with music at all. It's to do with profit. It's to do with, do you know what I mean? Greed. It's just greed. They see the market. They see a, a marquee or a warehouse full, four or 5,000 people. I mean, maybe like, maybe a fifth of them are sorted. The rest of them are looking. That's, you know, in their heads, that's like, that's cash. That's 15, 20 pound a head. Do you know what I mean? Or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's that, that part of it, I don't even think about it. It's frightening. But an event goes wrong, I think, when you start to get big drug dealers involved, you know, if they're trying to get into your event, and that's when all the troubles having start, you know, and, and the atmosphere gets bad. I do as a promoter more than anybody could possibly do. There's 
tents and stages, there's flooring, there's a lighting show, laser show, fencing, road signs, police, security, experts. Oh, there's been a lot of things. We've had to ensure that there's adequate numbers of toilets, um, general health and safety implications um, of the structure, the flooring, um, fire escapes. DJs, uh, DJs, flights if you're flying from abroad, accommodation, printing, toilets, heating, advertising, medical, St John's, rubbish oh, picking. Problem because it isn't the floor we were, ex we were expecting from the very beginning. Um, when we had our initial meetings, we were given information about various uh, things that were coming on site, and that included the floor, and we were shown photographs of flooring which had been used elsewhere. When we actually got here, the flooring was not what we had previously been shown, and I know the organiser was very upset with it as well. We've overcome that by placing hardboard over the problem areas and then placing mat or matting over the top of that, which gives a reasonably level surface. At least there is a floor because a lot of other raves you go to, you'll end up dancing on the grass until the grass is mud, and then when the when when the muds turn into rivers, it's you know all your design the trainers get destroyed and stuff. That's about, I suppose that's the weakest thing here, isn't it? It's the floor, the fact the floor isn't, it isn't flat. It was excellent when it was illegal. It was absolutely wicked. Because there was a buzz to it, and there was a buzz to getting busted as well, you know, when the police used to come along, turf everyone out. There was one party in London that I went to in 1988. The police wanted to clear this, so they thought, well, one thing that we do is we set the siren on the, on the, uh, on the vans off. Unfortunately, one of the top tunes at the minute, at that time, had this siren going through. Can you feel it burn? Too strong. Check this out. Now that it's legal, obviously it's much safer. But also now that it's legal, you might you might think, oh, it's not much of a kick. This isn't a warehouse party. It's a legal rave in a sports centre or in a fully framed and floored warehouse. Problems compared to ordinary festivals are really not that much different. The only big main problem is obviously the, the drugs element uh, and everything needs to be searched before they come into the venue. Uh, it's one of these things that it's better having a rave which is licensed than something that isn't. We have bins here, so is there any drink can be deposited in them? I mean, they bring bottles of coke filled with, with drink, alcohol, that gets deposited. We literally give them what we call a soft pack. Now. Yeah, if it's as organised as we are seeing the other night, I think God I thought it should take it up for the kids' sake. Because the kids were always saying that there's nothing for the kids to do. This is the answer. Right. If, they're, if, they're, if they're better behaving themselves, we can have these on every weekend. That is the brief and as far as that you need to know. The other thing is what I want to bring to your attention tonight, for those that may not know, is I have the type of tablets that people might supply. And they're for there for you to look at. There is some amphetamines, crushed amphetamines, LSD, and cannabis. We don't need that anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, sorry, you can't film this. Right? This is this this could lead to court cases, so you cannot film that, right? I'm sorry, mate. well or not you know there's still that risk that young people I think they will take and I think they're more likely to take it in this setting where other young people are doing it because it becomes almost like a dare they're all doing it it won't it won't harm us it's not supposed to be habit forming what does it matter anyway granting a license from our point of view it seems to be a license to to the drug pushers you know and which is a threat to our youngsters let's face it My philosophy is one of trying to please something properly where I can have sufficient officers here, where I have drug squad officers, I have drug sniffer dogs, all being paid for by the organiser. Rather than I get a phone call, which happens in some 
areas getting a phone call in the middle of the night saying that I've got several hundred or thousand people descending on an empty warehouse and all of a sudden I've got a problem and before I'm able to gather my resources to deal with it it's finished with at least here I can police it try my damnedest to control the drugs we don't need that anymore we don't need that anymore Like, I was just like to say that it's not like that and everything. Oh, We're wait. just trying to have a good time and all that. And like, people are just trying to put put her down and all that, but not having a good time. But we're not, we're not like that. We're just trying to have a good time and dance. Yeah. The way people um, think that they can find meaning in life uh, is through getting more and more excited. I don't blame the young people. I say that's the culture in which we live. I tend to think that raves are unhealthy uh, anyhow. I mean, I think uh, it puts a pressure on kids in all sorts of ways. I mean, the danger, although we understand many of these things are supposed to be drug-free, but we know that some drugs get in. Injected with a poison. Poison. The last three I've employed, um, Puma bots are called. I seem to hype the crowd a little bit, you know. I'm only interested in, in doing the event properly, I'm not interested in skimping on it and having trouble because I, mean, I know fine well if one event goes wrong, I mean, that's it, I won't get another bite of it, you know? Um, it's something entirely unique in my experience of 20 years service in, and uh, I've been to one or two events but nothing of this type at all. I think it's best described in my head as, as being surreal. Um, I spoke to quite a number of the young people who attend there before the event and in general they seem perfectly nice young people who in many cases have travelled a long, long way to get here. Uh, when the event started, when the music started and uh, the strobes, the lights and all the rest of it uh, came on, the situation changed. They still remained nice people, but I found the, the difference being that there was no communication amongst them. They were in the world of their own, 2,000 people in the world of their own, without any communication between any one of them. Um, I did have occasion to speak to some of the young people as the night went by, and I'll be talking to them quite loosely, and they would be answering quite loosely. And all of a sudden, they would start dancing frenetically, as if totally beyond their control. And um, they would just carry on and bop off into the distance, and that was, uh, that was their entertainment.
I'd say if you're going to the rave for the first time, go with a mate, go with your best friend. And uh, just have a look around. Um, it's, it's obvious, the trouble is obvious to me. Raves are usually big enough to like, stay well, well away. A nightclub is often not big enough to get out of the way. I can safely say that it's totally different to any nightclub or any uh, such a similar event where alcohol was available. The threat of violence just wasn't there. Um, there was no um, fear of anybody uh, setting about each other or anything like that, which you always have. In fact, in some occasions, you can actually taste it in the air that there, are, there is going to be trouble. But I can honestly say that that wasn't the case. People went there just to enjoy themselves, and by goodness, they certainly did that the majority of the time. We don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. I must say, in, in general terms, I obviously enjoyed what they did. Um, I found it a little bit disturbing, to be perfectly honest, that people can go into the world of their own without having uh, consideration for anything that's going on, on around them. But if that's what young people want to do, I, I see no harm in, in it, uh, per se. I was out there yeah. on the stage tonight. Did you have a good time? Ah, I loved it, yeah. How yeah. did it rate as a raid compared to what you wanted? I'd say it was the best one I've been to. But I'll be in another one in 12 hours' time. Uh, it's just another nail in the coffin, as I said. Let's <laughs> go!